If you're new to Adobe Premiere, in this video, I'm going to show you the beginner's guide on how to set up a project and work through an edit all the way through an export. Make sure you have the latest version of Adobe Premiere and make sure you've added it to your dock from your application for easy access. I'm going to press it on launch. Once Adobe launches, this is the screen that you're going to see. You're going to want to click new project and the new project panel is going to allow you to label your project. In this case, my project is called Toy Room. And then I want to pick a location where my project is going to be saved. So I'm going to browse and I'm going to pick my desktop and I have a folder already called Toy Room Project and I'm going to say choose. You don't have to worry about this stuff. It's a little more advanced, so you can now press OK. Now, this is the layout of Premiere when it first opens. If you don't see the same layout, make sure you go to Window, Workspace, and you have Editing selected as your layout. This is usually my default layout, so I'm going to make sure Editing is selected. And when that is selected, this is the layout that you should see. Here is going to be my timeline. Here is my project panel. And here's the source window where I could preview clips. And here is the program window, which will show your edit on the timeline. Before we get started on the edit, I want to make sure you organize your project the same way I have it organized. This file organization is one of the most important things I learned when I started editing. So on my desktop here, I'm going to close this panel. I have a folder called Toy Room Project. That's my project that I'm going to be working on. I'm going to double click that and I've created all these folders on that project. I usually create all these folders and copy them to every single project that I create. In that folder, I'm going to have footage, graphic, finished files and things like that. So make sure you create a folder, create all these empty bins. And I created my project file when I first began in this folder. Let's go back to Premiere. And the first thing I want to do is import media to start. So I'm going to go back to my finder. I'm going to press footage. I'm going to drag my footage into my project. It's going to import those files. Depending on how many files you're importing, this may take a little bit of time. I'm going to double click on footage. It's going to show 5D Mark III. I'm going to double click that. And then this panel is going to pop up showing all the clips that I have in that folder. I could scroll through and I could even scrub through some of these to get a little preview of what the clip is. And if you don't see the icon view, like the view I have here, you could click list view and list view shows them to you this way. But I like icon view. I even like to make them a little bigger with this just to get a better view of the clip so it's easier to preview. So I'm going to drag this panel down here and I'm going to close this other bin. And now I want to review some of my footage in a bigger window. So I'm going to grab the first clip I have here. I'm going to double click that and it's going to show up right here. So here you could scrub through and see that entire clip that I just double clicked on. You could double click the next clip, do the same thing. Now to start editing, we want to create our sequence because all our edits are going to take place in this sequence area. Right now we have no sequence. So your next step is drop media here to create a sequence. So I could either drag media from here and drop it and it will create a sequence. I'm going to press command Z twice to undo the drop and the sequence creation. I could always drag one of these clips from here. I'll just grab this clip and I could drop it here and it does the same thing. It created a sequence for me right here. And by doing this, Premiere is actually making a sequence that matches your clip. So you don't have to worry about what kind of sequence you pick to begin with. For example, if I come to file new sequence, Premiere is going to give me lots of options, lots of different frame rate and resolution and things that we don't really need to know right now because we're just going to want to match our sequence with the type of footage that we shot. So I'm just going to cancel that. And then this becomes the easiest way to create a sequence. So I'm going to go back. The best way to add footage to the sequence is not just dragging the entire clip and putting it here. So I'm going to delete this and show you a better way. So that same clip I just picked, I'm going to go ahead and put this clip in the preview. So now you see it in the preview. I just double clicked it to get it up here. Just a slider shot. So I don't want this entire clip. I just want a beginning and an end point for this clip. So to do that, I'm scrubbing through and I like right before the light hits this character. So I'm going to press I 
for the endpoint. Then I'm gonna scrub or press play. You could press spacebar, that's play, and that'll play. And then right there, I'm gonna press spacebar again, and then press O, that's my out point. So now I have an in point and an out point. Now to add this to my sequence, I have multiple options. I could press overwrite, and that would add the clip to the sequence, command Z to undo, or I could just drag it and put it in my sequence like that. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is if you just want the video and not the audio, you could just grab this video only and drag it here. Or if you just wanted audio only, you could grab audio only. And in that case, it doesn't bring video or audio depending on which one you dragged. So I'm gonna just gonna click that and just press delete. I, you could always grab things in your sequence and drag them like this, wherever you want in your sequence. So I'm gonna grab this, put it here. I'm gonna click that audio file I don't want. I'm gonna press delete. Let's do it to another clip here. Again, I'm gonna use I and O to create in and out point for this clip. And I'm pressing space here just to play and pause. Again, I'm gonna drag just a video clip. I'm gonna put it here. So now we have two clips. So in our sequence now, if we press space bar, it's gonna start playing our sequence. And then when there's a cut point right there, we'll go to the next one. Let's put a third clip there, maybe a wider shot of the room. So I'll press in here, press space bar, let it play and that's good. I'm gonna press space bar to pause, press out, and then again, put that into my sequence. So that's pretty much how you build your sequence clip by clip. Once you build your sequence like this, the next step is adding transitions between your cuts. Cuts actually could be a transition themselves, but I'm gonna show you how to create an effect. I'm just gonna close this pen here. And underneath there is an effects panel. And if you click effects, you'll see a lot of different options here. So you could go to video effects, you could go to video transitions, dissolve, that'll give you some options to create dissolves between things. And you could just take a cross dissolve, for example, and drag it and put it right in the middle of those two clips. So now if I go back here and press play, you see a dissolve. And if I select and press delete, the dissolve won't be there. So you could do things like dip to black, for example, that's another favorite transition of mine. Press play, dip to black. Let me do dip to white here, for example. That didn't work for that. So I'm gonna just try dip to black also for that clip. That works nicely for that clip as well. So that's how you add transitions between clips. Now, if you want to add effect to your video clips under video effect, for example, you could put things like color correction, brightness and contrast. So if I wanna make this more contrasty, I could just drag that and put it on my clip. Now, if I select that clip, I have to go up here and press effect control to make any changes to what I just put there. So you see brightness and contrast is the filter I just put. Now if you drag up and down on brightness, it changes the brightness. I'm gonna go to zero again, or contrast could be brought up and down again. And then I could look at before and after by clicking FX. So you get the idea. In this case, we don't need this brightness and contrast so i'm just going to select it here and press delete it's just going to get rid of it so now if i select that clip that effect is gone now if i press play on my sequence you see it just ends so i want to just fade it out so it doesn't have that sharp ending so i could just right or control click here apply default transition that creates a crossfade which is a default transition in premiere so now if i press play it just slowly fades out. Again, transitions are not necessary. A lot of times a clean cut could actually do the trick for you. You don't have to put a transition between every single cut. So next we wanna add music. So I'm gonna go back to my project bin again, and I've only brought in footage so far, and that's all we've worked with. So I'm gonna bring in another folder. I'm gonna go back to my finder, and I'm gonna drag our music folder into our project file. I always make sure I bring the whole folder so the structure and the organization stays the same. I'm gonna double click that, and this is the music we want. So I'm gonna select it, and I'm gonna drag it. Now we have our music 
in our audio track. If I drag here, I could make this bigger. So you could actually see the waveforms of the music track here. And this music file is obviously way too long. So if you see, it went all the way to two minutes. So I just wanted to end here. So I could press C and that'll give me my blade tool, which is a very handy tool. It allows you to create cuts like this in your audio or your video files. And then I'm gonna click V, which is your selection tool to go back to my selection. Now I could just delete the rest of the music that I don't need. And then I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna control or right click and apply default transition. And that'll slowly fade out my song. So now we have a sequence with audio and video. All we're missing is a title. So I'm gonna just select my entire sequence like this and move it to create a little space for my title sequence. And to make a title, when I close this pen, go to File, New, Title. You could always create these in a different program like Photoshop, which is what I prefer to do. But sometimes it's just nice to create a quick title. Awesome toy room. And then I'm gonna type in my title here. I could select it all and change the font. And I could make some of it bold, for example. You have all kinds of options with typography here that you could play with. I'm gonna close and then I have my new title here. If for some reason you don't see this title here, it might have ended up in one of your other folders. Just make sure you look in those folders and look for that title and drag it out here. Again, just like a regular clip, I could just bring it and drag it to any timeline. In this one I'm gonna put in video layer two. I'm gonna make video layer one just be my footage. So it's gonna be on video layer two. And this is a transparent layer. So right now you're just seeing the empty black behind it. But if I clicked here, it's gonna be on top of my video, which I kind of like. So I'm gonna grab all my footage and put it underneath. And then I could grab the end of this and make it longer or shorter. I just want it to end at the end of the first clip. To make sure you could do this easily, make sure you use the keyboard shortcut S that will enable snapping and that will make moves like this a lot easier. So make sure snapping is turned on. I'm gonna control click and apply default transition here. So then it just ends with that first clip. And now I'm gonna press play just to see. Maybe I wanna make that come in the same way that it goes out. So again, apply default transition. So now it's gonna fade in and then it's gonna fade out with the light. There we go. So now we wanna export our finished work. To do that, I wanna go at the end of my clip here. I could just press arrow down and that'll just move between the different cuts. So I'm gonna go to the end with arrow down and I'm gonna press O. That creates an out point for my sequence. I could do the same thing by pressing I to create an in point. It's the beginning of the sequence, so it doesn't make a difference. So now I have an in point and an out point. And once I have an in point and an out point on my working sequence, anything after this, if there were any clips here, they would not get exported. I'll just throw one here, for example, just to show you. So if this was here, this will not be exported because my in point and out point were selected. So now to export, go to File, Export, and Media. Here it's gonna give you some options for exporting. I'm gonna give you my favorite options for exporting. So for format, I'm gonna change that to H.264, which is a great compression for the web. And then I'm gonna change my preset to one of the presets here, depending on where I want to go with my video. For example, if I go all the way down, I could see multiple YouTube options. This was 1080p, for example, so YouTube 1080p, Vimeo, or any other format that is appropriate for my video. In this case, I'm gonna pick YouTube 1080p. It's gonna create all the default options here. I'm not gonna really change any of the default options. And then I wanna click output name. I want to change that, so I'm gonna to go to my desktop, go to Toy Room, go to the folder that I have for finished files. And then I'm gonna name this Awesome Toy Room. I'm gonna press enter. And now I'm ready to export. All I have to do now is press export here and I'll begin exporting my project. And depending on the speed of your computer and the size of the file, this may last anywhere from a few seconds to a few hours. And now I'm gonna go back to Finder just to view my finished file. So now if I click finished file, 
there's my file. I'm going to double click that. And there it is. There's my finished file. I could just scrub through it. Or I could press play to hear it with sound. And like I said, if you go to the end of it, it's the outpoint of your sequence and not the rest of the sequence. So it's only a 10 second clip here. That's your very quick and basic overview on Adobe Premiere. I hope it was helpful. If you want to go beyond the basics that you learn in this video, check out some of our other videos on our channel. To watch more how-to videos, go to howfinity.com or subscribe to our YouTube page. Thanks for watching.